okay so in this lesson i want to create the admin panel for our project okay so let's get this started okay so at first go to the components folder and here i want to open the header.j6 component okay so we go to the header component here and i want to add another link okay so here I duplicate the profile page and I say if user state question mark that user info question mark that admin was a true so a user that he or she's admin logged in I wanna show this a button okay and this button redirects the user to the admin panel okay so here i write admin dashboard okay dashboard and then here i write a slash admin okay so that's it and now if we go here we see the admin dashboard button why because we're admin okay so here then after adding this button we need to add or admin panel page okay so we need to go to the app.js and here i want to add another root okay and the root name is s slash admin okay and whenever uh, the admin goes to this address i want to return a component called admin layout okay and here this is a capital l okay admin layout so let's create this component so in the pages folder i want to create another folder called admin and in this folder i create a file called admin layout that j6 okay and here our div classes are flex flex call the height is equal to screen okay and then for large devices the flex direction is row okay so now i want to import this admin layout Okay, so I use the auto import and yeah, we're good to go. And if I go to the admin dashboard, I can't see anything, okay, because we didn't render any text or something else, okay. So if I say admin layout, you can see that we see the admin layout text, okay. So we start uh, creating our admin panel by coding the mobile design first okay so here at first we have a header okay i didn't design the mobile version but you know i create mobile version on my own okay so here at first we have a header in our admin layout okay here we have a header and this header comes from a components folder that we just create that okay so components and in this component we have a header folder and in this header folder we have a header.j6 file okay and here for our header let's write header here and then we import the header from the dot s slash components s slash header s slash header dot j6 okay uh, so just pay attention that we have two headers okay one header here for the admin panel and one header here in the source folder for our other pages okay so 
just pay attention that you need to import the header from the that is slash components slash header slash header dot j6 or whatever it is okay and now let's create the header design okay so instead of div i create a header tag okay and within this header tag i have two elements at first for my mobile design okay the first one is a logo okay so i have a logo okay and here i create a link that goes to the home page okay so this link goes to the home page and let's import the link from react root or dom and then within this link i have an image okay so i have source property and the source property is equal to images dot logo okay and the alt property is equal to logo and the class name are with 16 and yeah that's it so don't forget to import the images okay and now if we look at our design you see that we just see a logo okay and the next thing is that we want a menu burger icon okay so here i write a comment menu burger icon okay and under that i create a div and within this div we must render or close and menu icon so here at first i create a state okay and state name is is menu active okay and the default value is false and we need to import the user state from react and here i say if the is menu active was a true then i wanna render a icon called ai outline close okay and this icon comes from the react icons okay so i just auto import it here okay otherwise if the is menu active was a falsy okay i wanna render the ai outline menu okay and let's import this icon from the react icons okay and now we have some classes for or icons okay and the classes are width 6 and height 6 okay and one point that you may notice is that maybe i sometimes write tailwind classes and it will be resorted automatically when i save the file okay so for achieving this you just need to search about resorting the tailwind css and here we have this plugin okay prettier plugin tailwind css okay so if i search this name okay you see that in tailwind css blog we have a post about automatic class sorting with prettier okay so it's a official package that works with prettier extension in vs code and you just need to install the prettier plugin tailwind css as a dev dependencies okay you don't need to install the prettier okay at least in my case i didn't 
need to install the Prettier, okay? You install the Prettier, I think, here before, okay? So if if you search here for Prettier, you see that you most likely installed the, the Prettier before, okay? And you just need to copy this command and then in your project in the terminal just open another terminal and install the Prettier plugin Telvin CSS package okay so that's it and if you installed this package and then if you set the Prettier as the default formatter okay then you're good to go and your classes will be sorted automatically okay so you just click on prettier could uh, quote formatter as the default formatter okay and yeah that's it so let's continue here and the div classes are cursor pointer okay and yeah that's it and if we see our file we see that we have a logo and a burger icon okay and i wanna change the state whenever i click on whether the close icon or the menu icon okay so here for both of them i add an on click property and this is equal to a function called a toggle menu handler okay so let's create this function and here I just wanna toggle the set menu active set is menu active okay so I say set is menu active and here I get the previous state and I want to set the is menu active to the opposite of the current state. Okay, so I say prev that state, the opposite of prev that state. Okay, so now if I click here, you see that it will be toggled. Okay, now we need to add some classes to our header. Okay. So here the classes are flex, edge, fit, width, full, the items is center, and the justify is a bit fin. Okay, and we have a padding of four, and that's it. Okay, so here it's like this. If I click here, you see that it will be toggled, and no. We need to create our sidebar okay so i add another comment here and i say sidebar container okay and at first i check for the is menu active state okay so i say is menu active if it was trucy i wanna render my sidebar okay and here I have my container for my sidebar at first, okay? And the container classes are fixed inset zero, and that's it. And in my container, I have an underlay at first, okay? So here I add another comment and I say, this is the underlay okay and under that I have a self-closing tag and the classes are fixed in set 0 bg black and the opacity is 50 okay and for the unclick I wanna call the toggle menu handler okay so whenever the user clicks on the 
underlay or the backdrop of the sidebar the sidebar will be closed okay and now if we have our sidebar itself okay so i add another comment called sidebar and i create a div and the classes for my div are fixed okay fix it top zero and then bottom zero okay the left is a zero and the z index is 50 the width is three quarters the overflow y is u2 the bg is white and the padding is four and again within this div we have our logo so i create a link and then i have a image with the source property that is equal to images that logo okay and then i have a alt tag and the alt tag is equal to logo and the class name is equal to with 16 and the two property of the link is equal to slash okay at this moment if we see our browser you see that we have something like this if i click on the underlay here the dark part you see that the menu will be closed okay so here under our logo if we look at our design we have a main menu text here under our logo okay so here we have a h4 and within this h4 i write main menu okay and the classes for this h4 are margin top 10 the font bold and the text is this color okay sharp c7 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 okay and under or h4 we have our menu items okay so i add a comment here menu items so under that we have a div and the classes for this div are margin top six flex flex call the gap y is 0 0.563 rem and now within this div we have our links okay so at first uh, let's create a constant for our menu items okay so above the header component i create a constant called menu underscore items okay and here we have an array of some objects okay and here we have two different types of links the first one is a simple link and the second one is a collapsed button okay so for the first type here we have at first a title and the title will be equal to dashboard okay and then we have a link and if we click on dashboard we go to the slash admin okay and then we have an icon that here this will be equal to the component of the icon from the react icons okay so here i point to the ai fill dashboard okay and the text size is xl 
and the name is equal to dashboard why why we need a name because later for activating the links we need a name okay this could be an id okay so but i prefer to name it as the name okay and then we have a type property okay so the type property is equal to link for this object okay because it's a simple link but the type for this one will be collapse okay and then i copy this object two more times and for the second object the title will be equal to comments and the link is equal to a slash admin a slash comments and the icon will be fa comments okay fa comments okay and then the name is comments and the type is also link okay but for the third object here we have a different button so the title is posts okay and instead of link we have a content okay and in this posts we have a two links okay the first one is the new link and the second one is the manage link okay so if we click on the first button we go to the creating of a new post page okay but if we click on the second button we will go to the manage of our posts okay so here we have an array of two objects okay our first object has a title of new and it also has an another property called link okay and this will go to the slash admin slash posts slash new okay and our second object again has a title of manage and the link is equal to a slash admin a slash posts a slash manage okay and then our icon is equal to md dashboard okay and the name is equal to posts and the type is collapse okay and that's it now we use our menu items here within our div and we say menu items that map and we get each item okay and then we say okay so here instead of this parenthesis we say if item that type was equal to link then i wanna return the links here the simple links okay so here i have a nav item component so we will create this component in a second okay otherwise i want to return another component called nav item nav item collapse okay and let's create this two components okay so here in the headers folder i create another 
component called nav item that j6 okay and i also create another file called nav item collapse that j6 and at the end i import these two new components okay so for the nav item component here as the props we accept the link the title the icon the name and we also accept the active nav name and the set active nav name okay so here we have the active nav name and set active nav name and if we look at our menu items we had a name for each link okay so in a second we will create the state of the active nav, nav name in the header component okay so here i create another state called active nav name okay and the default value will be dashboard okay so whenever a, the admin user go to the admin panel the default page for the admin is the dashboard page okay and this will be the active one so here for the nav item component i pass the title okay the title is equal to item title then i pass the link okay and the link is equal to item that link the icon is equal to item that icon the name is item that name and the active nav name is equal to again active nav name and the uh, set active nav name again is equal to set active nav name okay and here now in our nav item component let's create our nav item and now i'm gonna turn this div to a nav link okay and this nav link comes from react router done okay and now the two property is equal to the link that we get from the props okay and we also have some classes and here i wanna conditionally render some classes okay so at first i say if the name was equal to the active nav name it means that this nav link must be active okay and when it's active it has the color of blue and yeah that's it so i say if the name was equal to the active nav name then i wanna return these two classes the font bold class and the text primary class okay otherwise here otherwise i wanna add these two classes so if it it wasn't active i wanna return the font semi bold and the text of the color of sharp a5 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 okay 
and the common classes for this nav link are flex items center gap x2 the py is 2 and the text size is lg okay so if we see our sidebar we have something like this okay and within this nav link we render our icon and the title okay and we also have a onclick property for our nav link okay so whenever the user clicks on this nav link component i wanna call the set active nav name and then i wanna pass the name okay so if we save this and see here you see that we have two items the dashboard and the comments okay so if i click here you see that i go to the comments but we haven't created a page for the comments so we will see an empty page okay so here i think we're done with this nav item component and now we need to create our nav item collapse component and here in the header let's copy these properties and paste them here okay and here instead of link we have content and this is equal to item dot content and other things will be the same and yeah that's it and now in the nav item collapse component we we need to accept our props okay so our props were title the content the icon name the active nav name okay and the set active nav name so now i don't wanna create this button from scratch okay i don't wanna create this collapse button from scratch and i wanna introduce you to a library called daisy ui okay so it's a tailwind CSS components and it works as a plugin of tailwind CSS. okay so behind the scenes it will add some tailwind CSS classes for you okay so here let's go to the c components page okay here and the installation process is very easy here you need to copy this comment npm i dash d daisy ui and then install this package with our terminal okay so let's open a new terminal and here i paste this comment and hit enter and now this package will be installed for us okay so now we need to rerun our project okay and before rerunning our project let's continue and add this config to our tailwind css config okay so in the tailwind.config.js file here we need to add another pro plugin okay and here you see that we import the daisy ui plugin okay and now we can 
rerun or server but again before that we need to add some configs but i want to show you that what will be happened if we don't add some configs for the daisy ui okay so here again i write yarn start and now you see that the daisy ui library added some default theme to our project okay but we don't want this theme and actually it broke our project okay so here in the tailwind.config.js you see that we can add some configs okay so if we go to the config section you see that we can add some configs here okay so i just copy these lines and we need to paste them under the plugins property okay so the temps here is equal to false when it's false it doesn't mean that no uh, we destroyed that dark term and we can see our previous term no it means that we only have the dark mode and the light mode okay so if you see the daisy ui document you see that we have a lot of themes okay we can config a lot of themes but now i want to disable all the themes okay because it broke my design okay so here instead of false we pass an empty array and empty array means that we don't want any temps okay and here we can remove the dark temp property the base is false okay you can read about these properties okay uh, and the styled is true and the rtl is false okay the prefix here i don't want the prefix property and the logs property and the utils is true and that's it and if we save this file and come back to our browser if we refresh you see that we get back to our previous design okay so nothing is broken now and we're good to go so if we go to the admin dashboard again and go to the mobile version you see that we see our sidebar here okay and it says that each child in the list should have a unique key okay no problem let's go to the header.j6 and here add a key property and the key property is equal to item.title okay again here the key is equal to item.title and yeah we're good to go and it doesn't complain to us anymore okay so now we can use the components of the daisy ui here we have a component called collapse okay you can also search for components from here okay here you see that we get predefined components and you see that we have some options here we can choose one of this but i wanna choose collapse with checkbox okay so i just click on j6 tab and copy this code i can also copy from here and then i paste the code in the in the nav item collapse component okay 
and if I save this file and go to my browser you see that here I have this collapse button but it's ugly and we need to overwrite the classes of this collapse button okay so here at first I want to add another class called collapse dash arrow and this adds an arrow to this collapse button okay you can read about the modifier classes from here you see that we have a collapse arrow class okay so then we have a collapse and the collapse arrow and here you see that we have a default height okay it's not padding it's height okay the padding is different the padding is the green part okay so it's a height so we have a mean height for our input here and we also have a padding okay so if i disable this padding you see that it removes the padding and yeah okay so we need to overwrite this two classes okay so just come here and now i want to say the mean height is zero and the rounded is known and the padding y is 2 okay and here the input type is checkbox and we also have two classes okay and the classes are mean height 0 and the padding y of 0 okay and then here let's refresh our page okay and then we have a checked property okay and the checked property is equal to if the name was equal to active nav name the checked property will be true okay for our title I wanna render the title that we get from the props and I also want to render the icon okay that again we get from the props so here we also need to add a mean height 0 and if we look at our design design is like this and we need to add the padding y of a zero and the padding left of a zero to this collapse title okay so now you see that we overwrite it the classes and the other classes are flex and the items is center okay and the gap x is a 2 okay and the text size is lg okay so here the text size is excel but we don't want this one okay so here you see that we have something like this and now i'm gonna turn this to a template a string okay so here i want to dynamically add some classes okay so i say if the name was equal to active nav name i want to add the font bold and the text of primary classes otherwise i want to add the font semi bold and the text 
with a color of sharp a5 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 okay so here it's three equals symbol okay and i think we're good to go but before that we need to remove the p tag and instead of that i add a div tag with the classes of margin top 2 and the flex and the flex call and the gap y of 2 and within the stiff I want to render my content so I say content that map here I get each item and then I return the link okay from the react router dom and the true property is equal to item that link and here I have my title item the title and yeah that's it and now if we look at our sidebar we have something like this so it's a comments page you can go here so here when I click on this you see that I can't see the content so for solving this we need to come to the nav item collapse and here for the input i add the unchange property okay and whenever the status of the input changes here i wanna run this function okay so at first i say set active nav name is equal to name and then the set is checked set is checked is equal to the opposite of is checked okay so here we haven't created this state so let's create this state okay is a state a snippet and here we have a, a state of is checked okay so here let's import the user state it's set is checked okay so no what error we have okay here the default value is false and no i think we're good to go yeah if i come here and click on this you see that our button will be collapsed and we see our items and if i click you see that we go to the admin slash post slash new page and yeah if i click here if i click here you see that we can navigate between items okay so that's it for mobile and in the desktop design you see that we can see something like this it's not bad it's not awful you know but you know we can make it better okay like this that we have in desktop okay with the sidebar here and the content here okay so let's responsive this design for a desktop so at first here i want to add a use effect to this nav item collapse component okay so here i say use effect and as the dependencies i'm gonna pass the active nav name and the name okay and here i say if active nav name 
was not equal to the name I wanna set is checked to false okay okay so just add this use effect for the nav item collapse component and then in the header component I want to add another use effect okay and I want to add this use effect because I want to set the is menu active to true so that we can see the sidebar in the desktop and if we on on the mobile version I want to set the is menu active state to false okay so here I write my use effect and as the dependencies okay at first i want to get the current widths of the browser window okay so we can write a custom hook or we can use a library called use hooks okay so i prefer to install the use hooks library okay so here i say npm install and then i wanna install the ui dot dev slash use hooks okay and from this library okay we can import the use window size hook okay so here i say import use window size from the use hooks library okay and then i use that library here okay so i say const window size is equal to the use window size hook and now i have access to the window size that height or the widths so now we don't have to write a custom hook for getting the widths of the browser okay so here i say if window size that widths was lower than 1024 pixel then I want to set is menu active to false okay otherwise I want to set is menu active to true okay and here as the dependency I want to pass the window size that widths okay so you see that when we're in desktop version it will be active automatically okay and when we go to the mobile version the sidebar will be disappear okay so here see that we go to the desktop version it will be active automatically okay so let's go ahead and make or header responsive for desktop devices okay so here for the header the classes are for lg the height is full and the max width is 300 pixel okay and the flex is a call the items is start and the justify is again start okay if we save this and look at our sidebar okay you see that we're changing our header okay so here 
after that I wanna make this a logo hidden in desktop okay because we don't need this logo anymore okay you see that I hide I hide my logo okay and then after that I also want to hide the menor burger icon okay it's not burger it's burger okay I had a typo okay so it's hidden in desktop devices again we have nothing and our sidebar is active in desktop so let's add our classes for our sidebar container okay so for large devices the position will be static instead of fixed and the height is full and the width is also full okay and then the underlay will be hidden in large devices okay so we can't see the underlay anymore and no they need to add some classes to our sidebar okay so here for our sidebar for large devices the position is static and the height is full the width is full and the padding the padding is six okay so here you see that we have something like this and we also need to add a padding of zero for the large devices to our header tag okay so if we add this you see that we have a sidebar here in the desktop and in mobile devices we have this sidebar okay so now we need to add a few more classes okay in the admin layout I want to add a main tag okay so our main content will be here and the classes are bg of sharp f9 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 and the flex of one and the padding is four and for large devices the padding is six okay so here we have our sidebar on the left and our main content on the right okay and here is the interesting part we have a outlet okay we have an outlet component that we can import from the react router dump and what this outlet does is that whatever we put within this root component it will be rendered here okay so what do i mean so here let's add a closing tag for the root of the admin and then I add another root within this root of the admin okay so if I add another root here and I pass an index property and for the elements this will be equal to the admin component okay and let's create this admin component in the admin folder okay so in the admin folder i create another folder called screens and in this folder i create a file called 
admin.j6 okay so here I just write admin okay so I can write admin dashboard okay and let's import this component here admin okay and now when we're on dashboard page we see the admin dashboard okay why because we used the outlet component from the react router dom here okay and as i said it renders whatever is here okay so if the pass is here you see that we added a index property okay so as default when we go to the admin pass this route will be rendered here okay so it, the outlet is like a placeholder for this admin component okay and we also can add other paths okay so here i wanna duplicate this route again and i wanna remove the index property and for the element i wanna pass the comment okay and the pass is equal to a slash comments okay and let's create this comment component in the screens okay so i create a folder called comments and in this folder i create a file called comments j6 rafce to generate a component and here i write comments okay with a capital c and then import that here comment okay comment from the components okay so here it's from component okay i imported it from a rank place okay so comments from the admin folder okay and now you see that here we need to go to the s slash admin s slash comments to see this comments component here and this comments component will be rendered here okay instead of outlet and now if i refresh this we see nothing why because i think we don't need this s slash okay okay so uh, whatever are here within this root within this parent root must not have slash okay so here it's a slash admin and then comments but for seeing this we need to go to the s slash admin s slash comments okay so if we go here you see that on the bottom left you see that we go to the admin comments and yeah you see we, when we go to the admin slash comments we see the comments component okay and what about the new and the manage page okay it's the same as here okay you can just add another root and say posts slash new okay or s slash create okay doesn't matter i name it new okay so in the header here yes it's new and 
if we go to the new page here you see that we see the comments why because we didn't change the element here okay so we change the element to new post okay and let's create this component okay so in the screen i create another folder called posts and create a file called new post j6 here new post okay and then render this component okay so new post and yeah you see that you can see the new post we go to the comments to the dashboard okay you see that this will be changed okay so let's create the manage two okay so here i create the manage pass manage and this will be equal to manage post and in the posts folder let's create the manage post j6 file and here i write manage posts it's manage posts not manage post okay so let's rename this and add a s at the end of this okay manage posts and yeah add an s and auto import it and now we can see the manage post we can see the new post the comments the dashboard and so on okay so that's it for this session the session was too long i know but in the next session we will go ahead and start protecting and creating the dashboard the comments the post pages okay so at first in the next session we need to add a use effect or you know some kind of middleware that protects the admin root so that if a user is not an admin we can prevent that user from going to the admin dashboard even if that user uh, comes here and write a slash admin okay and yeah i want to create a protector for our panel in the next session 